And so what I want to talk about this morning is in Romans chapter, the Bible, 12. But I want to talk today about turning around and bringing people together in a world that is divided. We live in a divided world. Is that a, is that a revelation or not? No, it's not a revelation. You don't have to go very far to see how divided we are. We are that intolerant now of tolerance. You think about how tolerant we're trying to be. We're so intolerant. We cannot tolerate anything about other people, people who do things wrong. Neighbors can't get on with each other anymore. You know, all the stuff that we do now was seen to we took for granted in a world that I believe that a world was probably more focused towards God. If you think about the post-war series and all the people that, or everything that's happened in life, the world was still a world that was kind of focused towards God. There was a lot of churches, there was a lot of things, people still had a fear of God. People still thought, if I I do the wrong thing, I'm probably going to go to hell. Now it's all about going to hell and having fun with your mates because there is no God. Yeah? Yeah? There's nothing that I'm accountable to. This is what happens in a society that begins to break down. And the thing that the Bible talks talks to us about is this very thing in Romans chapter 12. It says this. So I challenge us with this question. We, the church, can either be part of the problem or we can be the answer in the problem. Because Jesus has called us to be the answer through him, hasn't he? He's asked us to answer the world through the grace and the glory of Jesus Christ that he has come into the world to bring, to bring man into a relationship with the Father through his Holy Spirit who is alive and breathing and moving in this room right now. Whether you feel him or not, the Holy Ghost is moving in this room. He is moving stuff and talking to you. He's, he's, he's challenging us. He's like, you know, like this morning in the song service as Maddie was leading those a couple of songs, you know, you're being challenged challenge you know when is this song service going to end Graham said it before church in the prayer meeting he said wonder what I'm having for lunch today you know when we're thinking that way where are we in this gospel filled life where the power of a Jesus who came to bring an amazing gift of hope an amazing gift of salvation where are we in that walk with him today I choose to be a house of God that is a solution in this world and brings answers to people who have problems. One of the ways I know how to do it, because it's my background and it's something I was growing up with as a kid, is food. I love that we have food. I walked in this morning and I was thinking last night, should I make a pea and ham soup? And I didn't. I come in this morning and there's biscuits at the back table. I said, thank you, Jesus. Because what it does is it not because there's biscuits there, but because what it shows me is somebody thought, hey, we can put myself out here because they look home-baked. They don't actually look shop-bought. Somebody put some effort into the, what they thought it through. Now, if you buy them from the shop, that's okay. That's okay. All right, if you're, because you've paid money. I get it. It's a sacrifice. But the issue is this. It's not whether you home-bake them or buy them. It's when you start to think outside of you. That's what counts. Because why? We live in a world that doesn't live outside itself. So we are different. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed. So this is the NASB, the true Bible. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove Listen to this, or you looking for the will of God, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I want to read it in the NIV, the other infallible Bible. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, 
pleasing and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Jesus, through Paul, has given us instructions here through God's Word of the Holy Ghost, igniting it. Do not conform to the ways of this world. So if the world right now is angry, what are we, the church? We are not angry. We bring hope. We bring life. If the world right now is tearing people apart, what does the church do? It brings them together. It builds a life where people... Sorry, I stood down on the bottom here. I'm not allowed to do that. The videos, that's why. Come on, church. Do not conform to this world. I hear Christians all the time but bickering and backbiting and I don't like this and I don't like that. Jump on Facebook and tearing down pastors and ministers and saying these are charlatans, these are evil men. And I go, dear God, when is the world going to see that we're different? When is the world going to see that we are different to everything else? Because when we get together, when the body of Christ gets together, we are one. And when we are one, we are unstoppable. But the devil knows it. And as we don't surrender our lives, I need my glasses because I can't read my book. Can't even see you. But I'm not conforming to the pattern of this world. The world is always, just look at what's going around in the world. Anger, division, hatred, intolerance, impatience, entitlement. And it tries to creep into the church. Oh, I don't like that, so I don't think I'm going to go to that church. I'll go to another one when I feel comfortable. Where I feel valued. My value doesn't come from you. It comes from him. My value doesn't even come from this sexy hot mama. I'm married to her if you don't know who she is. What have I done? I'm down on the floor. My value does not come from her or you. It comes from him. It doesn't even come from me being a pastor. It comes from him. So I am transformed, therefore, it doesn't come from my children, my grandchildren, my house, my car, my motorbike, which is amazing, and it's a great motorbike, but and it's a Harley, and yes, I can make milkshakes while I ride it at the lights, because it shakes like this. But I will not conform. The Bible says, do not conform to the pattern. Of anger, division, strife, hatred, intolerance, impatience, entitlement. Don't conform to it. I'm not angry, by the way. I'm really excited about what God's doing in my life at the moment in this church. I am so excited about what, so don't feel like I'm angry. I am not. I am just so, so, so in love with God. I couldn't think of anyone more to give my life to, to surrender to, to say, God, here I am. There are so many people out here who don't know you. And if I don't, do, if I don't get you, if I don't allow you to take me and change me, this world won't see it. Come on, church. Don't conform to the things of this world. Look at what, you know, side note, remember the week I just read the Bible? That has gotten nearly 130 views more when I my preach this, this is where your pride comes in. <laughs> when I normally put my, my sermons or anyone in the church does, who preaches their sermons, they get around 30 to 20 to 30 people. I never break the limit of about 15. I'm the senior pastor. I should be, des- I deserve more. <laughs> Here I am reading the Bible, just the Bible. Remember that Sunday? 130 views. Now, that's not a lot if you compare it to other churches. And I'm not looking for views, but what I am looking at is going, go, what is the difference here that I just read a book of the Bible and it's gone through the roof? Because people are desperate for truth, and truth will set them free. So, what do we do? This is what we do. We walk in the opposite direction of what the world is doing. So, when you feel like getting caught up, sorry, am I out of, out of scope again? When you get, I'm training myself, so you're all part of the journey. So, you are, uh, you 
are now making a choice. If you jump on your Facebook and Instagrams and TikToks and do your little sugar booty one things and all stuff like that, if you do all that stuff, are you joining in with the arguments? I'm not saying don't get on there, but what are you joining in? Are you bringing, are you trying to turn the world to see a better picture? Or are you just agreeing with what they all do? Because that, I'll tell you what, start to speak opposite to what the world is saying. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. So what do we do? We walk in the opposite. We are a counter culture. The church is a counter culture. We're renewing our mind by the word of God. As I told you, many of you, if you're visiting with us, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not saying this for any reason. I try to keep it really simple, but I am reading the Bible. I've read it through. I'm just about to finish my fifth time through in two and a half years. I'm reading it three times this year. I will tell you this without a shadow of a doubt. My life has changed to the point where I'm not even trying to understand this Bible. I just said to God three years ago, two and a half years ago, I said, God, I am tired of of reading this and not getting it and not seeing you like people talk about. I want to know you. I've had that scripture in my heart, know God, be strong, do exploit. Then in 11.32, since I was a teenager, and now I've made a decision purposely. I've always made that decision. But since I have read the word, the power that I've seen, the word that God speaks to me when I spend my time with him, when I do this reading of the Bible, my life has changed. And now what I'm seeing is the gift in me, the gift that God, because he's been challenging me the last month when I start saying, God, how do we, 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 Toy Story. How do we, 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 how do we? And I'm saying, God, how do I begin? And he's been challenging me about my gifts. He said, what do you like to do, son? What have I put in you? I said, Father, it's just food. I love getting people around food and just having an enjoyable time. And I said, but that's not big enough. That's not, I'm not a discipler. I'm not a this and I'm not a that. And he said, you disciple people all the time. He started to show me where it was beginning to happen. So in the last month, I've made a purposeful setting to have people over for dinner, whether they're saved or unsaved. I've made a purposeful thing in my head at work. I will take food when I need to or buy it or when I need to. I will shout people lunch. I will do what I need to do because it's my gift. And once I step into my gift, because I'm also a giver, I'm a great giver. I would give away every cent that was in the bank to somebody who needed it right now for the church or for my own account. And I don't have a lot, but what I do have is a gift of giving. And so what the devil comes along and he attacks it. Sorry, I'm down again. He attacks it. He attacks it and tries to destroy it and go, what can you do? Because you've got nothing. And so what I've begun to see as I've read my Bible diligently, because you know what? In routine, when you have a routine, it destroys the rhetoric that the devil wants to speak into your life of that you're no good because you know what? I have a routine. But what happens in the church is that when our routine gets chucked out the door and the rhetoric becomes louder and louder and says, you're no good, you're never going to make it, you are the person that is not called for this business. But the more I stay in the Word, because the Word is life and the Word brings life, and as the Word of life comes into me, I, I begin to see God that we could do this and now I can see tables I can see people I can see outdoor kitchens and pizza ovens I can see weddings I can see a driveway filled with trees lined with trees and a beautiful bitumen entrance I see it but it's going to take us to go God I give over to you I give it to you I give it to you. And I begin to look at the the timber deck that's not under that thing over there. And I go, God, how do we do that? Because all he says to me right now, feed people. So yesterday when Shane said we could put, when we put the ties in, we could turn it into potatoes. All of a sudden, I felt the Holy Spirit go, that's how you do it. I go, God, this is not that simple, surely. It is. Because why we're counterculture thinking. My journey has been incredible. I, I, I wish I had time to write a book, but I don't. Well, Kevin Van der Western Trousers, Hausen, said to me years ago, who don't know if you know him, doesn't matter, prophet guy said, I can see you're writing a book and it's like scrambled eggs. Janine said, that's just perfectly you. It would be this, that and all this sort of stuff, but it, it probably is. But now I can start to see it. 
I can start to see how God is doing it, does it, but you've got to have a routine. Because when the rhetoric comes and you've listened to the rhetoric, the routine takes it over. But if you don't have a routine, the rhetoric takes over. So I've chosen routine. Last couple of weeks ago, I told you I had a, had a real tough run with my self-esteem. And usually that would last me for days, just being down and down and down and down. I think this one that was 24 hours, it started, I can pick you, I was in the supermarket, something happened there. And from the supermarket to home, I was in my dark hole. From the time I got home and tea that night, Janine said to me, honey, is everything okay? I said, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it, go away. Because that's what I do. That's the Darren. And then I came to this place. I'm so sorry if you don't like that, but that's what I do. Because you all have your own thing that you handle, how you handle people. This is how I do it when I'm finding my, fighting myself and trying to find God. Like you do. You know, you're trying to find God. God, I know you're here, but where are you right now? And so Janine started, left me alone because she knows when I speak like that, just leave him alone, give him some space. We went to bed. I think we went to sleep eventually at like 2 a.m. because she talks. But she does it right at this point because she knows how to find me or help me find me. And I went to sleep that night, still not feeling great, came to church that next morning and song led, felt horrible, was the worst song service I have ever done. You probably didn't know. People said, that was a great song service and I know what was going on in here. But that morning when I woke up, I still chose to do my routine, which was pray and read my Bible. So that morning, I felt faith break through. I saw the crack in the, in the pressure the enemy was putting on me. And so my routine the next morning when I got up, I still felt a little bit, yeah, but not as much. But I made a decision, I'm going to stick to my routine and not listen to the rhetoric. The rhetoric was, oh, look, just don't do it for a couple of days. And so I said, no, I'm going to stick to my routine. So I stuck to my routine, and guess what? I feel great. Have I had challenges? Pfft, yep. But I stick to my routine of God in the morning. I get up at 5 o'clock. This is my routine. 5 o'clock, get up, or 5.30, depending on how I was the night before. But I'm up. I go down, sit in my chair, fill my bottle of water up after I sit in my chair, before I sit in my chair, read the Bible, pray, and go about my day. By that time, it's 7 o'clock, enough time to get up, have a shower, jump in the car and go, make my lunch, go. Now, I don't have kids, so people with kids, you've got to work your stuff out. I got rid of all them, <laughs> so I'm in a happy space. But what I do know is that whatever routine you find, you will find it will defeat the rhetoric that comes your way. Because why we are not of this culture, we are not of this culture, we are of the kingdom. If you know Jesus Christ and have given your life to him, you are from his kingdom. And if he is the Lord of your life, as Janine said this morning, not just your Christ... Because many people come to the cross week in, week out with the same problem. But you need to be able to come to the cross and open the door of the cross and walk through it. Because in this world, it's amazing. It's amazing. When you walk into the kingdom, it's amazing. Your life will never be the same again. The way you look at people, all the people that you've been annoyed by for years, I'll stay up, don't worry. All those people. <gasps> it's amazing. And not only is it amazing, sometimes you think, what on earth could we possibly see? And then you pull it back and it looks even more incredible. Why? Because it's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. It's not the kingdom of man. Man just looks like, it's just, where do these go? Oh, they're the same. doesn't matter. Don't, look at that. I'm a genius. God is amazing. The kingdom of God is incredible, isn't it? If you know it. And, and, and <clears throat> I need some water. It's been a rough day today. God is amazing. Oh, even a little bit on the head's good. But you've got to, you got to begin to see 
If we live in this world and we're not of it, I'm not going to conform myself to it. I'm not going to give myself to it. I'm going to give everything I can to the kingdom of God. And I'm going to live for it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were counterculture. Jesus and the woman at the well was counterculture. She was a Samaritan woman for starters and a woman. So it was counterculture that a man would go and talk to her. The good Samaritan story was a counterculture. Jesus giving his life for us was counterculture. Jesus surrendering it, being kind to others. So how does this affect me? Being kind to others is counterculture. Showing grace to a person that doesn't deserve it is counterculture. Sharing a meal with someone today is counterculture. Because I haven't got enough. We're living in a world where people don't have enough. They're looking for more. They need more. They haven't got a house. They haven't got enough food. And so to actually share something with somebody else is so hard because I don't have enough. But what I'm finding is even though I might have and not, not have enough, as I share, I have bountiful. I have bountiful. It's incredible to watch what God does. Sharing a meal is counterculture. Being vulnerable is counterculture. Oh, I'm all right. I'm a Christian. Oh, shut up. Have you let God be the Lord of your life? Has the Holy Spirit? Don't tell people you're a Christian. Be one. Then they go, oh, I thought there was something weird about you. Because you will be weird when you're kind. You will be weird when you show grace. You will be weird when you're vulnerable. You will be weird when you give mercy. You will be weird when you lay down your life you will be weird you walk around with pot plants you won't be able to change your mind anymore because every time you see one of these you'll go there's the kingdom i see it i see it you see out there that space out there i see it like the garden of eden i have no idea what the garden of eden looked like but i do know this that anything green in Townsville, would be like the Garden of Eden. What I do know is I can see that whole area out there covered with beautiful canopies and trees and people be able to walk in there and sit at the, at the deck there. I can see it without... I can see it. Because when people come into this property, I want them to experience counterculture. I really want them to experience God. But the way that you experience things I've noticed is when it's different. When it's different. And the world out there, zooming past us every minute, can look and see that cross leaning. I don't know if you noticed, but it's leaning. It's not now, it's fixed now. Thank you to whoever fixed it. Shane, I think it was. And all those crosses were on the paddock. Something stood out. The person that said to me, they said, thank you. Somebody messaged me privately in the DM of Facebook world. Said, thanks. Your statement has gone, not gone unseen. Wow. That person messages us privately on the Facebook page since. Amazing. This little connection. I think it's amazing. Why? Because you want to be counterculture. When I look at this property now, I look and go, I used to look and go, I just hate it. Look at the dirty, the stupid dongers out there. What does it look like? It looks like a dumping ground. But now I see three wonderful buildings that need to be turned into a kids' ministry hall. But we need help. So we can look at stuff as rubbish. Those tires over there, I looked at them for years as a, I was so angry about them. I used to think, that's a rubbish. But in the last couple of months, I started to walk around the property and go, God, this, we could do this. We could do this. We could do that. 
And all of a sudden, people yesterday at the Working Bee started to go, we could do this. And I go, it's happening. We could, we could do that. What if? Use what we have because it's counterculture. The culture wants everything new and flashy. We need a new big stage. We need a, a new big sound system. And we need new amazing cameras. We want, we want all this stuff. But what's the point of it if we're not reaching the lost? What's the point of it if the kingdom of God doesn't rule and reign in my heart? So I want to be counterculture, living like this. So what happens when we allow the Lord to do this? We'll begin to see and feel like he does. I'll begin to see people differently. People are no longer notches on my belt or bums on seats. They are lives that need to find Jesus. So every morsel they put in their mouth, they would find Jesus. When I sit at a table across from them out there and they share with me there's something that's going on, I could take the moment and go, that's a really bit sad. I just really feel hard, 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 sad for that. Do you mind if I pray with you? What, a, what, a, what a kind of a church would that be? If somebody was just sharing what they were going through and we stopped instead of trying to change the subject because it was uncomfortable and we just said, look, I have nothing, but what I can do is I can pray with you. And people tell me their problems sometimes in church and they're talking to me about the woes and so I'm listening to it and I'm going, dear God, i got nothing except you. But that's enough. And I say, can I pray with you right now? Because I don't want to be their answer. I want Jesus to be the answer. And that sounds so cliche-ish and it sounds everything and I just, but it's true. I think if, I had a, if we had a church right here in this city, right now, like this, that said, you know what? We don't know it all, but we know Jesus. Would you let him be Lord of your life? I'm not interested. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep you in my thoughts and my prayers. They come back. I thought you weren't interested. I'm not, but I liked it here. I like sitting out under the trees. I liked looking at the smiles on your faces. I liked the feeling that I was safe. And I felt like I could say anything and nobody would turn it into a, I now I've got stuff on you. But that's why I came back. Because there's a trail away. I knew I was somewhere special. Because tears were rolling down and I couldn't hold it in. I didn't know why, but I just felt different. That's the church I see. I get to experience a little bit of heaven when I see people. I love it when people come to my house and eat my food and had some brisket the other night and somebody said, I have never had meat this soft. I thought, hmm, that's the best thing you can say to someone who cooked is just thank you. That was great. Then I turned to Kay and she had a mouthful of fat because she got the brisket bit and she's now <laughs> poor thing. What else happens is I get to be transparent and open and who I am and letting God do what he will with me, trying to be a vessel who's just more open and to love like Christ loved. See, the world out there is so broken. They don't know what love is, but when they come to it, they think they know they, know they want more of it. They just don't know what it is. It's like Janine was saying, sharing with our young drug addict friend in Brisbane, he was craving death, but he was actually craving life. 
Christianity is a counterculture. And when we learn to walk humbly with God, this is what, folks, this is what it is. It's walking humbly with God and letting Him be the Lord of your life so you can be a vessel who can love and be loved. Could I ask you one thing as a church? Please, let Jesus love you. Let him love you. Let him, let him burst through all the barriers. Because there's a bunch of people that are coming to this house. Some of them are Christian. Some of them are not. And we need to be able to let them know they are loved. They are valued. And that they belong in the kingdom of God. See, my job is simply to lead my neighbor to something that will help them with their problems. That's Jesus. But Jesus fills my hands with food. I don't know what he fills yours with. Maybe it's plants. We have people in our church that are incredible with these things and not the plastic ones. That's my level. But there are people in this church that are so gifted in this area. There are people in this church that are so gifted with other things. And I know, I get that we've been hurt. I get that we have been hurt. But somewhere, we have to become vulnerable again. Somewhere we have to say, I'm going to give of myself. I don't think I can give of myself anymore. How much more do I have to give if you're feeling like that? Because I know what it's like to feel like that. It means you're not doing it with his strength. People who serve are amazing people. There's servants, people who are gifted, but they often end up being burnt out and hurt because somewhere that gift crosses from spirit life to flesh life because you're going to get hurt and abused. Jesus tells us this all the time. I was at a, a gathering recently and at a bunch of churches and a bunch of Christians and I didn't know anybody in the room except one person and they were occupied with that day and I stood in that room, you know, I stood in that room and nobody spoke to me. A bunch of Christians. Nobody spoke a word to me. Until I decided that I would go and speak to people. So I went and spoke to two or three people. The conversation was like ripping teeth out of a hen. And that's hard when, it's, when I'm saying that. That's, that's tough. And I just went away from that. And at first I felt like there must be something wrong with me. And I started to make it all about me. And I, then I started to see God... Please don't let us be like that. Now, I don't know. See, I'm just telling my story. There's a lot of stories in that room. But what I do know this is people need to know that Jesus loves them. My task is to lead my neighbor, who is whoever's around me, to know that there's someone that can help them with their problems. And what can I do? I hear you ask. Let's turn around and walk in the opposite direction. Simply just turn. So Romans 12.2 says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, that comes by the word, by the way. Read the word. I don't understand it. Read the word. Just read it. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve. This is what we can do. We can test and approve what's God's will, what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amazing. Just simply by not conforming to the pattern of this world. 
and allowing your mind to be transformed. So as you allow your mind to be transformed, tithe. I haven't got the money. Tithe. Watch what God can do. Watch what he will unfold for you. Watch, watch his grace. Thank <music> you.